Hi folks, I'm Clay and I'm the LSAT director for Claiborne Education. I'm excited to show you how the decision tree process plays out on a logic game in a way that, that reveals so much to us in advance. And this is gonna be a particularly high yield game. So we'll see that very clearly. And um, we're looking at test 38 and game number two. Make sure you have that in front of you because due to LSAX copyright, I'm not gonna read it out in advance or you know, put it on um, the, the whiteboard here. We're just gonna, we're gonna dive right in. We're gonna say, all right, this is showing us about three groups. So let's get on in there, get our hands dirty and think about the, the three groups. Uh, one of them is in the first group. So our second two groups need to be larger we'll keep that in mind as we draw it out here we've got the groups m p and s and we've got the seven applicants our players or elements that we need to fill in and we're looking for a good kind of rule maybe a block or maybe a good conditional rule to get us started and we do get a block that is great news that H and Y are stuck together. Uh, and by the way, we'll go ahead and jump to the last rule and drop F in there um, because we know that that's always true. And now we're prepared to think about H, Y. We wanna start there and we wanna toggle the possibilities. We wanna consider what could happen. Don't just write H, Y with a rectangle out to the right or you know out on the side, put it in there and get your hands dirty, start scribbling and figure out how could this look? Well, clearly they can't be in management because there's only one there. So we really just have two possibilities for the HY block. And notice this is great. If we put it in production, we've already filled the P group. All right, so let's consider that in light of our conditional rule. It says that if X is in sales, then W is in production. But we know there's no more room in production. So by contrapositive, since W is not in production, X can't be in sales, ding, 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 gotta be an M. And we actually, and we, we know everything. Everybody else falls into place, even the floaters um, or the floater I in this case, and, and really W is like a floater here. We just wanna look at the other rules and make sure we didn't violate a rule by doing this. But it set, just says that F and G can't be together. That's fine. We've covered all the rules. Great, that's a possibility that is as high yield as you can get. We know everything. And that's the only thing that can happen if the HY block is in production. Very powerful. Let's now move the H HY block to sales, which is gonna have a little bit more variability. So at this place, I like to jump to the conditional rule. Conditional rules can be very powerful to use. They, they occur a lot on grouping. And although there's, there's the contrapositive aspect that you always want to deal with, but there's also a sense in which you can toggle the sufficient condition of the conditional rule. You can say, or to put it another way, just say yes to it and then say no to it. What if the sufficient condition is true and what if it's false? Now, formal logic tells us that if it's false, we can't infer anything directly, but we still are gonna work out the possibility we wanna say, all right, let's say yes first. Let's say that Xavier is in sales, which means by sufficient condition that W is forced into production. And then because G can't be with F, has to be over here, the floater falls into place and we learn everything. All right now it's not gonna be as cut and dried if X is not in sales because then we don't know where W is, right? But here's where you not want to apply another principle and that's to always turn negatives into positives. Wherever possible, if you have a rule where you're saying, well, so-and-so is not here, it's better to say, well, where actually is it than to say it's not here. What I mean by that here is that, well, we could say, all right, X is not an S but let's play out both of the possibilities for where X could be. And then we'll see a lot more clearly. Well, if we have this possibility, 
we still need to put G in place. Can't be with F. Management is full, so G falls into place. Once again, we're learning absolutely everything. The floater I and the essentially floater W fall into place. But what if X is in the middle? This is gonna be the, the least filled in, but still substantially filled in. If X is in the middle with F, we have HY here, then what's remaining is really just to say, well, where does G go? Remember that G can't be with F. So it's probably worth doing two more game boards just to show it as clearly as possible. If G is there, then I and W are a handle like so. But if G is the last one in sales, because it can't be with F, then I and W would be a handle like so. They, they'd have to be an M or P. I'm just gonna put them as close together as possible and then put in F and X just to make the handle easy to draw. But notice the decision tree process was still, where does X go? Okay, so to review, here's the decision tree process. We said, what if the block is in P? That blocked in everybody. Then, sorry, block HY. Then what if the HY block is in S? Well, then we said yes to the conditional rule. Let's put X in sales. Everything fell into place. And then we said, well, what if it's not in sales? What if it's here in M? Everything falls into place. What if it's in production? Well, then there we, we needed to toggle the two possible places for G to really get clarity on what can happen. The bottom line is in only five pictures, five possibilities, we have an overwhelming mastery of the game's action. It's going to be nearly impossible for the questions to stump us at this point. So I hope you see how thinking through the decision tree process, you know, is it this or this? And then is it this or this? Yields these advanced game boards that give you an incredibly powerful, effective approach to coming to the, the questions on logic games such that you here you just really need the setup. You can go and do the questions on your own because the difficult work is done and you have an amazing set of tools to work with.